And um, you know, we phoned up. Uh, you know, Friends of Maldives was a, obviously a, a primarily a human rights group yeah. prior to the tsunami hitting, and I immediately phoned the uh, Maldivian High Commissioner, um, and said, "Look, um, you know, we need to work together to help the people, the islanders that have really been yeah. affected badly, and to set aside our differences, and to work together to help, you know, the tsunami victims." And uh, after a little bit of grumbling, he um, he agreed. But um, that was really the government were not unsupportive, but they certainly weren't that obliging with helping us. Certainly for the first two months, and then they became more and more obstructive in our aid efforts, um, which culminated in well me being blacklisted. The main thing was to go over to meet the. Disaster Management yes. Committee yeah. to actually um, discuss what was happening to our aid because our, our aid had been actually um, educational aid. They'd taken it into storage and it wasn't getting through to the tsunami victims. So um, they'd apparently found some Christmas books in this in this aid. So it is Christian, Christian uh, missionary thing. missionary kind of rubbish inside these containers and um, so I was going to go over there and actually speak to the disaster management center and say look we checked this, this stuff we double checked it triple checked it for anything that might be of a religious nature and uh, there's it's just not possible that there was anything like this there and as I flew into the um, Sri Lanka they Sri Lankan airlines took me aside and said um, Fred Mr. Hardingham you're not um, allowed to go to the Maldives, you've been blacklisted, so you will not be allowed to take the flight. So later on the day it became clear that apparently I was in an investigation for um, a plot to smuggle uh, weapons and, and armory into the Maldives on some Islamic extremist plot. <laughs> so um, having been uh, accused of being a Christian missionary for, for uh, over a, year. a few months... No, over um, a year. Well, it was, it, no, it was uh, in April that I was blacklisted. And they'd increasingly, over f uh, February, March and April, mm. accused yeah. us of being Christian missionaries. And so to suddenly become an Islamic terrorist uh, was, you know, pretty much a miraculous overnight Quite an conversion. Quite experience, I'd say, for you. So I went straight to see all the um, consulates in Sri Lanka and I said, look, um, I'm obviously not an Islamic extremist and uh, this is just... Um, you know, made up by the Maldivian government to stop our aid work and to um, cripple our aid work. Mm. From a, a Maldivian point of view, um, a lot of the aid that reached the Maldives um, were left untouched for still, I mean, we're, we're over a year now. I mean, things like um, really huge desalination plant units and the whole, um, all the accessories for it, they've, they've been sitting in islands, you know, and, and not being installed, um, we've I've had people sending me pictures of, of these things, and we've been publicizing these things as well. Um, the the government uh, or the so-called government is is as we expected, you know, not in a position to manage this uh, huge aid that's co that's been coming into the Maldives, and luckily. Uh, because of the pressure from in, inside and outside on, on the Maldives, uh, a lot of the NGOs, the bigger ones, went on their own, like um, the International Committee of the, I mean, the Red Cross and all these um, larger organizations went on their own and set up their offices there, started delivering aid. That was the, the government failed to deliver it to the people, which is quite sad because these are very, very expensive um, things, you know. Then, I mean, it's what what I'm saying is that you know these are, I mean these these people in these islands are very, um, you know they they've always wanted fresh water, you know desalination water, and and when you have these huge units that can produce enough for them, you know within a few hours for them to consume for a week, these uh, expensive, really really pricey units are just standing, you know, sitting there somewhere. And the, and the government is, is not, not utilizing them. And we have the perfect example of, of a warehouse that FOM mm. donated to Huarafushi. Um, um, or uh, is it Huarafushi? Kuludufushi. No, Kulu 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 
screwed the first and it's it's mm. initially they wanted to mm. you know demolish it well this this building we sent it over from wales this uh, company in wales donated this building it's worth uh, totally the project was about uh, eighty thousand dollars and um when it was built the fisheries minister uh told the island chief that this building had to be demolished because it was donated by Christian missionaries. <laughs> so, <laughs> extraordinary stuff. <laughs> and now the building uh, remains. There's a, there was, it's been um, on independent news in the Maldives. It's, it's, it's been talked about, so the government are, are obviously not going to uh, order it to be demolished now because public opinion is quite strongly against mm, it. Yes, yes. But... Um, at the moment, uh, this is now nearly six months after it was completed. This building remains empty, and it's a, it's one of the largest buildings outside of Mali. Absolutely ideal as an indoor market or a yes. um, you know fish market, but it's really to benefit the island community in the northern region of the Maldives. It's, it's in the se center. It's in a big island in the really center of the northern part of the Maldives, which would benefit a lot of people. And these yeah. people are not getting the the benefit that this building would give them. The island chief is now refusing to issue permits, yeah, for for the local businessmen to go and you know do their business in these places, which is which is very sad, you know. It just makes us wonder, really, whether the government of Maldives really do care about the welfare of its people.